Welcome back to the channel everybody and I have worked on this green arrow in the past however this time I had a request for a commission well custom hoodie and an extra set of arrows the arrows you can view on the other video because I've already worked on those but this video will center itself around the hoodie itself I won't show you the entire process because it's incredibly tiny to get the camera in there but I will show you my mistakes and my final result. This obviously is the final result of the actual project. However, there are still a few tiny mistakes in here that I had to correct to show the very end clip with it all being cleaned up. Now, let's get started and show you the materials you're going to need to be able to accomplish this project besides just the sewing machine you see in the back. So to begin with, you're gonna need three different sewing machine pieces. You're gonna need a zipper foot, and this is gonna allow you to get in very tight to those edges to create some of those seams, whether it's on the inside or decoratively on the outside. You're also going to need a piping foot. And this piping foot has two grooves on the bottom that allow you, well, to create a piping. And that's going to be a decorative edge for that particular piece. You're also going to need the, well, the standard foot. So you can do your standard sewing, whether it's going to be on the exterior or on the interior to hide some of those seams. Let me show you what I'm talking about. As with any other project that is going to be in particular of sewing, you're going to need to cut a pattern. And I just took a scrap piece of notebook paper, drew out a sleeveless shirt, which is a vest, and I cut it so that I can create my pattern. And as you can tell, it is two and three quarter inches wide by three and a half inches tall. And you can, well, make it as tall as you want. I just fold it over the edge because I did not want it to be a long tunic. I wanted it to be more of a vest. This is the stretch pleather that I acquired from Joanne's Fabrics and it is very very easy to work with and of course it's also difficult in the sense that if you make a mistake well you're gonna see the holes in there. Now I cut my pattern too small. The one I just showed you is the corrected pattern. This one is so small that it just doesn't wrap around the figure. Now I did sew it using the standard foot to create the seams that you see here. And again, it's just too small of a vest. It does not close around the figure. And you'll have to remember that the figure itself already has a vest on it. It's a molded uh, um, detail that's on the figure. Now, this is the foot that I ended up using to create the piping on the bottom. And as you can tell, I did use the vinyl or the pleather. It just didn't really work out. So I ended up using a different material, which is the spandex. And I used the piping foot in this fashion. You uh, can set it next to the, or on top of the fabric with an actual piece of piping or cord or whatever it is you have on the inside edge and as you can see it is a stretchable spandex and has a shiny side and a dull side obviously the shiny side is what goes on the outside and the needle will then run along that groove and create this piping the color of thread that you want to use is going to be up to you Try to get as close a color as you can to the material that you're sewing so that you don't see the stitching as evident in the final product. Again, getting back to the piping, I did insert this plastic piping, which is actually a cord for bead jewelry, and I chose it because it's actually hollow and I can put a wire in it. It ended up being too thick too large so it made the piping look too obtrusive and it would not uh, it would not bend properly it was just too rigid because the wire was not strong enough to well to bend that piping now 
This is what it would look like if you were on the sewing machine and running it along and sewing that edge. It really makes it much easier to use that. Now, if you're brave enough, you can insert the piping and use the zipper foot to run along the edge and create a really, really tight fit. Again, it's gonna be up to you after you get some practice and do this. Showing you this on the sewing machine is a little bit more difficult. It's a little easier to show you here off of the actual sewing machine. Now, once you've got that done, you can pull that piping out and just use that edge you created so that you can insert it now at the edge of the actual vest. Now, I did add the wire here, and as you can tell, it bends nicely. Again, that was too small. So I recut it, a larger pattern this time. And this time I thought I was being smart and I put in a liner. It was too much material. Now this is the piping on the hoodie itself and I ran it along the edge. It was too rigid. The wire is not strong enough to bend that piping in the way that I want so that it looks like a natural fit. I removed it from the bottom as you can tell here and it made it that much easier. Now the sleeves themselves were a whole different project as in I had to hand sew those because I could not get it into the machine. Now the back or the inside, here I did use the sewing machine, but it was best to hand sew it. Now if you wanna avoid that cone on the hoodie, you're gonna have to sew as much as you can in a curve to the top of the hoodie. And if you don't sew enough, you're going to end up with a sharp cone and it's going to look abnormal. Now, this is my finished product here. And as you can tell, I used all of those different sewing machine pieces to be able to achieve this. You're not going to be able to do it using just the one foot. You have a spandex decorative edge here that now runs with the wire all along the edge from the bottom all the way around to the hoodie. There is no plastic uh, piping. It is actually empty. Now the divot that you see here, uh, this just shows you that this pleather is soft enough that when you attach the um, actual quiver, it will um, hold it in place. It won't puncture it. If you want to puncture it, that's up to you. I kind of like it the way it is. I'll let the customer decide if he wants to punch it or actually just cut a slight, uh, uh, what would you say, opening for that quiver. Again, this is the zipper foot. This is what I ended up using to get very, very close to the edges without um, losing the other edge underneath and actually stitching it together. This is what is right here. Using this zipper foot, I created this stitch. Very difficult to do using the standard foot because it hides your work. As you can tell, the zipper foot has the needle on the edge, either left or right, depending on your machine, and you can see where your needle is going. And if you have the thick material underneath, you can create that piping using the zipper foot. And as you can tell, the inside there is no lining. Now, the back end in the hoodie, I had to hand stitch because it's so small. The actual curb on the hoodie, as you can tell here, I ended up sewing almost all the way to the edge of the hoodie to get rid of that ugly cone. That way when you fold it over, you have a rounded natural look. Otherwise you'd have that pointed cone and it's just, it looks really bad. As you can tell, there is a wire and you will have to adjust it according to your liking as to how you want that hoodie to look. I know this was a short video, but I wanted to keep it short and instructive, giving you creative ideas to expand on your creativity. Now, like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, I'm gonna leave you with some video of the finished product, and don't forget to keep customizing those figures. We'll see you here next time.